Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to be going into the essentials of the continent versus continent event and what you need to know to get started. So without further ado, let's dive right in. To hop into the CVC event, you will need to have this little pop-up right here, this little blue portal. So when this does pop up, you'll have a timer here. This is for the end of our event. You will have it as a countdown to when you can start the event as well, whenever you are getting ready. I think it starts at about three to five days out. So to join, you will need to be castle level uh, 20 I believe and your Congress will need to have been occupied for at least one season so if you were to occupy your Congress right now to get the ball rolling you will need to wait um, until the next season so we're in season 5 of CVC right now you will need to wait until season 6 so whenever you hop in here there will be a restriction on how soon you can leave from CVC. So whenever you join, you can't leave for at least one hour. And then whenever you leave, you can't join for at least one hour. Now let's hop in and let's talk about it. Now once you're in here, you're gonna start on one of these tiles on the outside edge here where you can see the numbers. Those are your starting zones. You can see here, ours is up here by C23. And then whenever you start, there will be um, a gate in front of a few of the sides here. So we have our gate 4, gate 2, gate 1. Now if when these open you can see we have a timer here so we have a one day left on our gate 1. So if we were to lose this to C23 and C23 occupied our gate on this day they can actually come in here and start attacking us. So you want to make sure to take your gates and to cherish them because if not then you'll just have to leave CVC and it'll kind of all be done. So in CVC we do have an order of these gates. We have a lot of buildings that we got to take. Um, so like we have our Fortress A, Fortress B, our uh, Ancient Temple, we have Gate 5, Gate 4s leading into our Magdar zones, we have our Crystal zones. And so they all open on a schedule. So on our first day when we come in here we will have three days to wait until our gate one opens after our gate one opens we will have two days until fortress a and then we will have three days until our gate two on gate two we will have access to our crystal zones so that'll be kind of nice that gives everybody a little bit of downtime i guess in between spar toy rallies and stuff if you wanted to take a break for a little bit then we have our gate three which will uh, lead into our Fortress B and then our Gate 4 which will open up our Magdar areas um, and give you some access there which is really good. It's a great way to get some Loka. As you can see here there's 3 million vouchers that are given out amongst those rallies. Um, it is over once all 3 million vouchers are given out for that contest. Um, it would be for like Major 1 itself not split amongst all the brackets. Um, after that, we have our Gate 5, which will start off, uh, well, I mean, uh, midweek mid -week 4 here. <laughs> so it doesn't start off week 4, but midweek 4, we have our Gate 5, which is required for the Ancient Temple, as you can see right here. You need to occupy this Gate 5 to get in here to get the Ancient Temple. Now, each of these structures do have their own occupancy limits. So within our gates, we are going to have a limit of 3 million troops. And within the Fortress 8, you will have a 4 million troop capacity limit. And then Fortress B has 5 million, and the Ancient Temple has a 6 million troop capacity limit. Now, outside of just taking the objectives to conquer the map, there are a lot of point objectives. So throughout this event, there are um, four weeks, um, as we saw within the structure layout here, and each of those weeks have their own point delegations. Now within week one, we have a lot of uh, gathering points. So it'll be one point for gathering a thousand food, lumber, stone, gold. And then there is also two points for training tier four and then eight points for training tier five. Now in week two, we do get points for starting to kill monsters. This does include rally monsters. This is a great time. Uh, most uh, continents and alliances start rallying Spar Toy right when you hop in there. 
um, just as a great way of getting speed ups and crystals and VIP if you haven't maxed it already. Um, but this is a great way to start getting some of the credit for it. And then you can also see here there is some troop training as well. And then on week three, we also have kill or er, yeah, slaying monsters, but this is only for rally monsters. So that is one important distinction there. So the spar toy that you had been doing in week two will still count in week three. And in week four, it is full kill event. So we will get points for only killing tier four and tier five. And then we get points for healing. <clears throat> we only get points for tier five on healing and then death and armor, which will both give us two points for each tier five that is killed or healed. And then troop training will stay the same as always. And now in here, these points are needed to fill out our battle point uh, layout here, this little chart. Um, so as you go through here, you'll get a bunch of little chests um, within your individual points. You have to meet certain requirements to be able to, and the cumulative total for the CVC participation just for these battle points and for these ancient battlefield quest tab, which will be just for killing monsters, um, for raid monsters, for war prep, for training, and I believe, yeah, gathering resources, um, and then here are some for killing and healing. Um, now just for completing all of these quests, you will get 29,000 crystals. You'll get 84 million resources, 52 days worth of speed ups, 1,000 VIP points, 6,000 Lord XP, 21 gold chests, 18 epic treasure pieces, 12 legendary treasure pieces, and almost 1900 of the level four random boxes like you see right here. So it's actually split, it'd be about 900 um, and some change of each of these speed up and resource boxes. Still amazing um, and worthwhile to just participate. But then you still have your weekly rewards that you still get for just participating each week with your alliance and keeping them at the top. And which is a great way to stack some legendary pieces as you can see and then as you get to the end of the week or the end of the contest we do have the cumulative rewards so there are uh, I believe it's I want to say nine million yeah nine million vouchers here on the individual rankings that we are giving away and it starts off pretty heavy so 10% of that goes straight to first place and then we have 720,000 vouchers for second place. Third gets a good chunk, and then it kind of dwindles from there, and it'll go through the top 200. Now the same uh, is for the Continental. The Continental is the only other place to get the Loco rewards other than just from Magdar rallies. So in here it will still be the top 200, but it's only the top four alliances that will get part of this Loco payout. Um, so most of it will end up being split amongst the people who uh, got it at the top. So it'll be a fair bit of double dipping at the end of the day, which isn't great, um, but just shows that it does need a little bit of work. Um, there is another event here, the treasure hunt event, but I already did a video on it. Um, so I don't really have much more to go into detail on here. You will need a lot of um, AP. As you can see here, these Magdar take 50 AP. I think this is base. Um, my mastery set up for PvP. Um, so my <laughs> AP is a little <clears throat> wonky right now <clears throat> on these costs. But it's still a great time, a good time to go and get closer with your alliance, get to know some more of your teammates, and to just take advantage and stack these good rewards. Thanks for sticking around. I'll see you guys next time.